it is important for us to uh, recognize that we are here, that we we can continue to bring our traditions and cultures. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I am Carolina Quiroga. I am a storyteller, teacher artist, and we are here to talk about Hispanic Heritage Month. And I have my friend Romelia Perez, uh, who is right here. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about herself. De donde es? Where are you from? Okay, yo soy de Ciudad Juárez, it's across from El Paso, Texas, and that's okay. what I, I born there. Okay. And I, I travel all around because my cousin was in the service, Air Force. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. And every every place, oh my goodness, I went, I just, um, uh you know, I, I went even to the island of Hawaii. I, I used to live there for, for four years. Oh. And uh, then my one daughter born right there too. And uh, and the Navy was stationed in that island. So we have a, a happy time, you know, really on the beach and everything. <laughs> so, yeah, we are, we live in very happy in the island and for four years and my daughter born there I have a born uh, one daughter that born in the island and the uh, uh, the Marshall Island people they come to for the houses to clean the houses for us to and they wash clothes too and everything and um, we were very nice and then we have a big cinema outside that everybody goes and sit down outside and watch the movie in a big screen. And also, while we ride right there, it was bicycles only. So uh -huh. I was pregnant with my baby here and I was on my bicycle driving because it was the only transportation we have. It was one grocery store, one bowling alley, which was very good, uh, with three lanes, that's all. And I win some trophies right there because I was pretty good. I was uh, <laughs> throwing it 205, 210. I was really good. Yeah. Biking? Huh? B biking? Biking, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I was, wow. Uh, yeah, no, we, we don't, only the bike, that's all we have, bicycles. Wow. Well, I'm impressed, Romelia, I'm impressed. Oh, see. Mm -hmm. Well, um, just a little bit. Uh, I'm actually from Colombia, South America. Oh, well, well, nice, nice. Yes. And I have a question. So when did you end up living in the U.S. like permanently? Cuando se vino? Oh, here? Mm -hmm. Here. Um, uh, we live in New Jersey. We live in uh, uh, in. Um, uh, New Jersey and what was it? And the island and the um and um well, <clears throat> what uh, what else? Uh, uh, oh, North Dakota. We live in North Dakota for I guess one year or two years, something like that. And um, and we live in um, let me see in New Jersey, New Jersey, North Dakota, and. Um, Oh, we uh, we went to Canada too, oh, and, wow. and uh, yeah, we, we were close to. And um, let me see. For, uh, so you've been all over the place. Oh yes, yes. And my kids, yeah, they they uh, went to school. Whatever they, you know, we move. They uh -huh. go to school. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you: uh, during all this time that you've been living in the U.S. How have you experienced the celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month? Like, um, you, my, you know about my, it. My experience. Mm -hmm. 
that, uh, well, in that island myself, I did have a lot of friends from, some from Colombia, some from the, uh, Monterrey, different people. I make a lot of friends right there. And then in my, in my, in my trailer, I outside, we have, um, uh, like a patio and I, um, I make, uh, we make, uh, I make, uh, what they call them, enchiladas and I cook for my friends and everything. Yeah. And at the, at the uh, club, is a big, uh, one thing is they have in that island. They have a big club and they knew that I was cooking Mexican food. So they called me and they said, well, we invite you to come over here and, and make the, the um, enchiladas and and something, or oh, chile rellenos and things like that. Mm -hmm. and so I went, yeah. So we have a good time there too. Like I says, everywhere I went, I make friends, you know. Uh, let me ask you a question. When when you were moving around, so did you did you talk Spanish to your kids or or at home? Well, the problem is that my husband and myself, we only speak English with them because and the schools that they went to different schools, they didn't meet any Hispanic kids, kids you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so they, you know, but I, I talked to them in English and Spanish. So there's my daughter, yeah, she can, you know, speak, uh, uh, I think the three of us, they, they understood, they understood the, the Spanish and, I mean, and English and uh, Spanish and English, Spanish, just like that. That's Spanish. Spanish. Spanish, yes, yes. Spanish. <laughs> yes. Okay. So um I heard once from a person that um she was maybe about your age, and she told me once that she uh, when they moved here, she felt like she couldn't teach her children Spanish because it was not like really like a good idea. Um, so she spoke really? with English to them and she then she felt bad because she thought that by not, you know, trying to put a little bit of Spanish into their world, uh, they kind of lost a little bit of their heritage. And how do you feel about it? Well, it's not a good idea, but you know what? It, it, it was like myself. Uh, I uh, I talk more in, in English because, like I said, my kids went to school and, mm -hmm. and my husband and I, well, we were talking back and forth in Spanish, just my husband and myself, that's all, but not to my kids. And mm -hmm. my kids, well, I just didn't pay attention too much to that they, uh, well, my, what happened is my son, he has problems because we were speaking Spanish and English, Spanish and English, and he didn't, you know, uh, put all together. And and uh, so later, well, he has to learn, you know, both uh, languages too. And he they understood Spanish and English. Yeah, everybody. Uh, do, you think the, it's, do you think it's good a person has at least two languages, at least kind of like a speaks fluently one and the other one kind of understands it. Is, uh, it, is bueno ser bilingüe? Do you think it's good to be a bilingual person? Oh, yes. Yes, I think so. You know, because in and, and this world, I mean, anywhere you move, you find people, you know, different kinds of people. And so, like, uh, yesterday we went to McDonald's and, and they told me, I said, you know, I like to learn Spanish, but if he took his he spoke in Spanish and everything, a little little by little in English and this and that, he says because I couldn't, you know, in, in in school they couldn't learn and this and that. And then his mother was from Colombia and this and oh well, we she was talking, there were we were to talking back and forth, you know. And mm -hmm. he, Nice, it's nice, you know. The, he says as well. Now, if if you anything um, when people Spanish people goes he, it comes here, well, try to speak in Spanish with them. So this way, you you practice, practice make makes what perfect, perfect, exactly. <laughs> 
So. And I, I heard other people also try to learn Spanish just to welcome the newcomers. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. To make them feel at home. Here? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, anybody that I knew that uh, I said, oh, this is new, this. And then I called them. I says, oh, hi, are you new here? And I said, what's your name? And then I give my name to them. And and then if you like to sit, my, because the table that I sit is, is a round table to eat lunch. And this is what I, you know. No, it's nice over here. So I'm happy here because if, if my granddaughters and my grandsons are married. They have kids. I don't have no place to go because one doesn't have, a, well, uh, it's fine. They have big houses, but I still doesn't matter if they have big houses. Yeah. The thing is that they work from mm -hmm. home and then they have kids you know too so well, yeah um uh, let me ask you a question so when did you leave puebla uh mexico oh mexico Ciudad how old were you cuantos años tenia so, oh that is a one thing i got married very young mm -hmm. from just high school and that's it my ah. husband yeah no my husband fall in love with me as soon as he saw me. So we didn't, uh, you know, maybe less than a year. And then he gave me the engagement ring. Oh boy. My mother, when he saw him, my, I says, daughter, he's going to be a good husband for you. Said, well, okay. So that's it, you know. And um, and uh, like I said, every place I we move, I look for school to go to school, you know. And and uh, I was good in spelling. And um, let me see. What else? And um, when I moved to different, like I said, different places, I was looking for, uh, for uh, you know, to, for, to go to school to, to learn more about, um, about, um, uh, uh, to speak English, to speak English. Ah. And to write down in English, but I, you so, know, little by little, like. Was I, it, how was your experience learning English? How my, my experience was, I, that I remember, I'm 85, you know, right now, I'm 85, November, I'm going to be 85, 86. And, uh, and, and so, you know, um. Was it hard learning English or was it easy or did uh, it long well, but No, no, I that wasn't there is it wasn't, but you know, the writing and everything, uh, that one was hard, a little bit hard. Yes. Yeah, too. But since I um I don't write a lot um, and, and also uh, mm. I was uh, let me see. Uh, mm, what, what can I tell you? Uh, this was so many years ago. And and the one that we, the, the last time I went to the school, it was in, in, I think, in New Jersey, I think. Okay. So you lived in the border until you okay. were like, what, 17, 18? Yes, seven. And, uh, and did you experience any like what all those things that happened during the in the border during those times? Like how was life in the border of the oh, United no, States? Oh no, those times they were nice, easy people, fixed papers, uh, easy to work in El Paso because a lot of people from Juarez, this is what they do. Oh, okay. And myself, I got married in New Mexico. Las Cruces, New Mexico. Okay. This is what my husband and myself got married in Las Cruces, New Mexico. So it was was it easy for people from Mexico to go across the U.S. and no. just you know, like was no. it easy? For no, because right there is a lot. Oh my goodness, uh, you can find in El Paso. Oh, a lot of people from Juarez. A lot of people they live there, you know. But they work. Okay, the the thing is they they live in Juarez. And they work in El Paso. Ah. And crossing, we were in on the on the, yes, we were um 
you know, people that, and I work also in El Paso too, in a store that has, they sell factories, you know, and my dress, my wedding dress and everything, uh, I got it there because this is what we asked, we were selling and they gave me discounts and I used to work for Jewish people. Mm. So there were a lot of cultures in El Paso? Oh, yes, my God. I mean, half of the is Mexican and El Paso is everybody is, is from, most of is from Juarez. Yeah, they come from in other countries, but, you know, it's, uh, for us, it's close right there. And if you fix your paper, your passport, because you have to have a passport, you know, to, to go across, uh, going to El Paso. And um, when I got married, I fixed my papers and everything and, you know, no problem. And it was very easy for people to fix their, their um, to, wor uh, to work in El Paso because they fix their papers very fast. It was not, they don't have any difficulties with anything. Not like today. Oh, no. Today is for <laughs> I mean, it, you know, yeah. Okay. So it was it was a different time. It was easier. Oh, to yes. It was a different order in, what is it, the 1950s? Maybe? Uh, 1950s, 50s? yes. Uh -huh. In 70s, yeah. Yeah. And people, neighbors uh, of different uh, backgrounds just were good neighbors to each other. And it was just. Yes. Yeah, right, right. Yes. So, Romelia, mm -hmm. I guess I'm going to tell you my story now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the, uh, I, I actually came to the U.S. Uh -huh. in 2012. Um, so that was 12 years ago. Oh, and I'm from Colombia. That's in South America. You already mm -hmm. have friends from Colombia, so oh, you know. Yes, yes, is, right? yes. And um, I came to do a master's in storytelling. Aprender um, mm narración. -hmm. Um, I wanted to change my life. I hit the crisis of the 30s. Uh, so I, I, I had turned 30 and I wanted to do something different with my life. So I I found this uh, master's in storytelling at East Tennessee State University. Oh, very and nice. I came to do that. And I was not planning to stay. My My plan was just, you know, to get a degree and then just go back or do something else. And, but I, like you, I fell in love and yeah. uh, got married. And that's why I ended up staying. Um, so it was not part of my plan to to get married either <laughs> and stay in. But you know how it is. Like you said, your husband fell madly in love with you. Oh, yeah. behind it too. And yes. so we ended up following our husbands. And my husband also went was in the army and we moved a lot this past 10 years. So I know what it is to move and move. Oh, and yes, yes. You, you make friends, but you your friends are only for a couple of months and exactly. they have to say bye. And no, it, you, you don't yeah. stay in touch with them. So I understand how that is. Oh yes. And so that's kind of where I'm where I'm from. I my English which is funny. Um, I don't know, maybe in your times you didn't have this, but in my case, to take the master's in storytelling, I had to prove that my English was proficient, right? Oh. So I had to take a test called the TOEFL test. Uh -huh. And I took it in Colombia and, and it said, you speak English perfectly or at least proficient enough. Oh, and nice. and. Uh, Of course, when you're in your own country and you're speaking another language to your friends or your teachers, they will say, you speak so well. And that's what they said to me. And when I came here and I landed in Tennessee, my English was just, mm. I couldn't understand what people were saying and they didn't understand me back. And part of that is because accents are uh -huh. tough, um, right? You know that. Uh, you know that. My action is not going to change. It's still the same. <laughs> I know. It is hard. And people yes. assume that we don't have accents, yes. uh, but we absolutely, every person has an accent. Uh -huh. And in Tennessee, they have a very specific accent. And uh -huh. that was very hard for me. Oh, and sure. I had a hard time the first year. I, I just couldn't understand what they were saying. Uh, 
I don't know if this happened to you, um, maybe when you were learning English, but in my case, sometimes I would hear what they were saying and I would catch a couple of words and then I would just freeze, just trying to put those couple of words together to make a meaning of what yes. they were asking me. Uh -huh. And and people would get mad oh. because they wanted to, you know, they wanted an answer quickly. It was like, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, my brain was processing. Oh. And so I don't know that. Did you ever feel like that when you were learning English? I was feeling like a what? Did you ever feel like that? ¿Alguna vez se sintió que de pronto el inglés como que, uh, no lo entendía? Oh. Well, no, 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 I just, uh, no, not really. No, well, it wasn't um, bad, not bad, you. Bad, you know. No, I, you know, I guess because maybe every every place uh, that I move, that it, it make me, I was okay, I was happy. Okay. Because like my mother says, you you know, you if you're going to marry, you're going to be living in different places, different countries, and and, and uh, so you're going to have to learn English too, you know? I said, yes, mother, I know well, you know, but not well. My pronunciation sometimes is bad, and my accent too, and sometimes people don't understand, and well, but it's okay. But I would say you had an advantage, Romelia. You mm -hmm. were younger than me. <laughs> because... Oh, yes. Yeah, you started learning English when you were be earlier than 20. Mm -hmm. And I'm I started after my 30s, which is was oh. a little harder. I see. Mm -hmm. It becomes harder. So but eventually uh eventually, after, eventually oh. everything got good. Yes. <laughs> now I understand yes. them for the most part. Oh yeah. But uh yeah, that that was that has been like my journey. Uh -huh. Um and, and even part of because I, I met other people that were in similar circumstances yeah. like mine. I met many Latinos and Hispanics, which is not yeah. the same thing. Yeah, no, no. no. Technicalities there. Really? <laughs> uh, to be a Latino is to be from a Latin American country. And uh -huh. to be Hispanic is to have Espanol, Spanish uh -huh. as your main language. Yes, so yes. I met people from these backgrounds and they were having also a hard time sometimes like me. Um, because they also came when they were 30 or 40 or 50 and, and yeah and everybody comes uh with so many from different situations like yes. I, I feel like your situation was a, a blessing situation you already oh, lived in the border you fell in love oh, yeah. your oh, husband yeah. was in the air force yeah um, and my situation was pretty good in, in many instances but I feel like a lot of times people come with uh, really you know sad stories and yeah. and it's hard to for other people including even us sometimes to understand you know um, or to embrace that these yeah. people came in with a different story oh yes yes right yeah yeah and I live also in Florida Oh, and so you met a lot of different Latinos. Oh, yes, yes. No, everywhere I went to, you know. And uh, yeah, I was happy there too, but not, uh, we didn't, let me see, live uh, maybe around, maybe six, three months or four months right there. Yeah. Not just a couple, just yeah, enough. not, not yeah. too long. Oh, yeah, not too long, but, uh, but I met uh, some people. But not Hispanic, just uh, American people. Um. So when I first came to Tennessee, I I really didn't see many um, his uh, like pockets of Hispanics. Uh huh. I um. I mean, I came to a very small town, and uh, things were still a little. Um. I was still kind of a strange person for some people i put it like this my husband's grandmother she's turning 94 and about when i was introduced to his family she told me once that when she grew up they never saw people like me mm -hmm. around and she grew up in georgia oh um, so maybe she was aware of you know black people but they were not aware of 
you know, this color of skin people. Uh, and yes. so 12 years ago, when I came to, to East Tennessee, I was, mm -hmm. I was like, how do you say that when you, um, you stand out like a sore thumb, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, every time I went out of the university, I could see, you know, their, the looks are like, who are you? Uh, mm -hmm. You exactly. are not from here. Yes. Um, and I, in many cases, also, there was the assumption that I was Mexican. So, and, and trying to explain, no, I'm not from Mexico, I'm from Colombia, and then that's another continent, yeah, like, yes, yes. somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then when we moved to Texas, I is Mex Texas is very Mexican American or Mexican. Oh, yes, yes. Right? So, yes. And I, I met wonderful Mexican people. Uh, they are very united, which is, is yes. something that is uh, that I value very much. And they're Mexican people and Mexican Americans are very their solidarity. They want to oh, yes. help everybody. They want to welcome. Is is like is really nice. Exactly. I haven't met other like you said any pockets of different Latin Americans like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, sometimes I hear, yeah, there's some Colombians or there's some yeah. Puerto Ricans or stuff Ooh, like that. Know, that's a, yeah. Mm, in Georgia, well, well, when I was in Georgia, there was COVID, so <laughs> you can't meet anybody. And now I'm here. Yeah, and this is still a very Caucasian region. Uh, mm -hmm. And most of the people I've met are Mexican and one Peruvian. And they are amazing. I mean, uh, I love so much now Mexican culture that I, I call myself Mexico-Colombian-American. <laughs> I have a U.S. citizenship, but I love yes. so much how Mexican people have welcomed me and helped me in all regards uh, yes. because they know what it is to be different, to yeah. have a struggle learning Espanol, yeah. um, to miss family. Uh, in fact, Mexican, Mexican culture is very family oriented. Oh, yes, yes. Very, yes. very much. Yeah, I mean, family goes, yeah. like you said, you have a big family, right? Yes, yes. Yes, and and I and I I didn't when I was growing up I didn't have abuelas or abuelos grandparents abuelas or abuelos yeah they were uh they had died already so I grew up without abuelas or abuelos or grandparents and mm -hmm. here in the U S I have found my abuelas and my abuelos and no. some are Mexican some are white oh. <laughs> um, okay. Because people, I mean, specifically the Mexican ones and my husband's family, they've been like very, very welcoming, very nice. Oh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Like it doesn't take like 30 seconds and you're already part of the family. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. When my husband and I got married, <clears throat> we say, well, from now on, we're going to have uh, the family is going to be close to us, you know, and, and all the kids that we have. And keep growing and growing, and you know, it just uh, he worked for a good company that transferred us. Not he he went out of the air force. He was four years in the air force, and he says it's enough. And he says otherwise because I'm not going to earn enough money. We want to have kids, and then he find a, a good company and uh, to work with, and this is the company that transferred us to everywhere around. And very nice, and like I say, my kids uh, in every school, they I say, oh, mother, when are we going to move? Because we're going to have to make good friend, uh, friends. I say, oh, well, yes, you're going to have to make more friends, and this is what is important. So um, why is it important to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month? Um, I believe is because, I mean, the, 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 the technical answer is because it's is the time when we get to acknowledge uh, the presence of Latinos in the, in the history of the United States and our contributions and to, uh, you know, just just be conscious that we've been here for a long time and that we come from different places. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of the technical uh, answer to it. But in my case, I think it's bigger than that. It's not only about... Uh, all the good things that we have done, which in politics and, and in other things, there are 
Silvia Mendes, for instance, is an amazing. Cesar Chavez. We can talk about those things, but I think most importantly is because oh, yeah. it is important for <laughs> us to recognize us, uh, recognize that we are here and that, that we don't need to continue to assimilate 100% to this other culture, that we, we can continue to bring our traditions and cultures and, of course, adapt them but we can continue to grow them here with our families and with our friends and, and that it is okay and that we don't have to erase our pasts like our maybe our some of uh people have, have done in the past because they needed to fit in. Uh, they had to erase their past. They had to erase their names, last names, or change them or erase, erase their Spanish or even other languages, because not everybody that comes from Latin America speaks Espanol. There are indigenous cultures uh, that speak, you know, Nahuatl and other, other indigenous languages. And sometimes they feel like they have to erase all that and just start anew. And I think it's important to, for people like you who were here before us to remind us that it is okay to be Latino, that we should celebrate ourselves You're and proud. that we can continue so what I do you never, think yeah well i never had any problems of race and nobody discriminate me nobody that says oh because you're mexican you don't no i always have a big such a good luck that i never feel discrimination never not even with my kids too that's no, great person. yeah no that's great but in your opinion, Romelia, so why, why do you think it's important? Should we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and why? What's good about it? You know, I never think about it, about that. Never. Uh, when I hear all this, it's five, uh, Cinco de Mayo. It's oh, just yeah. celebrating. This, so it's, yeah, for me, it's, it's not important you know to celebrate it and if somebody celebrates let this go we invite my mother okay everybody goes together all this you know mm -hmm. but no just um i don't know we uh like family like says uh break uh we we anybody that birthdays and birthday said it's birthday for this and that and i kept my calendar too my husband used to make um he did a calendar with all the names of the green kids and gray ones and everything. So this way we will know what day is, what birthday and this and then they will call them happy birthday to sing happy birthday and and uh, just like that, you know, so. What, what, what do you feel about maybe not the word celebration? Because it kind of implies like we're maybe throwing a party, but maybe um, how do you feel about just talking about our Latino roots and, you know, letting other people know that we are here and, and that maybe sharing a little bit of our culture with other people. Who, who, How do you feel about it? <laughs> it's been so many years that I, um, I don't have anybody really, uh, especially here in Missouri. I don't have uh, fam uh, friends that speak in Spanish. Really, I'm the only one so far here <laughs> in this building. And that's all, you know. So how do you feel about maybe you sharing with your friends there a little bit about your your culture, like where you're from or your, how your parents or stories from your- Oh, oh yeah, my, like I said, you know, my, yeah, we, we live in, in Juarez and and I, like I said, I used to work in El Paso in a factory, a factory, where they sell clothes and for, um, I mean, uh, material for for weddings and all this. And every time the, you know, I, I work for a Jewish people and uh, every time they were very good to me, very good to me. And, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, I was with the employees. Oh, and I work for dealers too. Dealers. <clears throat> dealers is a very good store. And uh, I also work for them. And um, uh, let me see. And uh, 
good seller and everything. And they put, you know, they raised my salary right there because I was good. The uh, Every time when uh, anybody comes, the uh, customers comes to the stores, I show them and everything and talking and very, you know, very nice with everybody. So, you know, it's... So Romilia, how do you feel about maybe uh, maybe sharing with your friends where you are about your 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 the food that you used to cook when with your oh with your family that is Mexican food? Maybe oh, you yes. feel like maybe you could uh, talk more about it with your friends and where that is from and um, oh you know, yes yes the well, stories behind the food. Well, the thing is. Well, my son lives in Delaware and he came here for a year, for a month. And we make uh, tamales and we make this, uh, yes, tamales. And, and the whole family came and bring uh, a dish of different kind of food and everything. And we get together, like I said, a family only. That's it. Friends, well, I did have a dear friend, like, and I told her, you are, we are not friends. We are sisters because she was really nice, beautiful lady. Um, well, my name is Carolina Quiroga, and you can find more about my work as a storyteller at uh -huh. carolinaquiroga.com. Okay. Uh, maybe it'll be written right here somewhere. And okay. uh, uh, there's videos there uh, where I tell folk tales and fairy tales and myths oh. and legends from all Latin America, in oh. English mostly with a bit of Spanish. Uh -huh. I also have a podcast, uh, which is a program, like a radio program, oh, where I, nice. I shared stories from Latin American literature, mm -hmm. uh, literatura, in English and in Spanish, and it's Very called nice. Tres Cuentos, but it's all in my website, carolinaquiroga.com. Well, that's all for today. This is okay. this been, like a great chat with Romelia. Thank you so yeah. much for well, joining me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Sí, señora. Muchas yes. gracias. Muchas gracias for an interview. And um, what I, I says, I like it. Well, I'm glad that I was talking to you and I enjoy it. I enjoy it. You know, I enjoyed meeting you and hearing your story. Yes, yes. So I just said goodbye. And I think to myself, what a wonder.